Hello, welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. There have been multiple studies about the negative effects of violent video games, particularly on children's brain. However, what if some video games actually made you healthier? What if those games could help you lose weight, manage depression, and nag out PTSD? Turns out they can, and there's a science behind it. Here to share her personal experience is Jane McGonagall. She's a world-renowned video game designer and author of the book, Super Better, a revolutionary approach to getting stronger, happier, braver, and more resilient. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. So uh, you think, or based on your scientific knowledge, that video games can help with a lot of emotional issues. Absolutely. And what I've been doing is collecting all of the peer-reviewed scientific studies, looking at how ordinary video games like Tetris or Candy Crush Saga. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get into that. Yeah. Now, your store. One of the. You know, I was looking at your book. One of the, the points, uh, or at least the, the genesis of all of this, uh, is that in 2009 you had a concussion. That's right. I and, did. And that put you out of commission for a while, and that made you think about you know, getting back in the game. Tell me about that experience. Well, you know, I hit my head. I had a concussion that didn't heal properly. And I was, you know, I was still concussed for a year. Headaches, nausea, couldn't think properly. Um, fortunately, by that point, I had been researching the psychology of games for more than a decade. And I knew that when we play games, we adopt a mindset that lets us be more determined, more optimistic, more creative, better problem solvers. So I thought if I could bring that gameful mindset to my recovery, that it might help my brain heal better. And, and, and because of the experience that you had, you did what you did be do best. You developed a game, right? Exactly. Which is? The game is called Super Better, and more than half a million people now have played it for depression, anxiety, traumatic brain injury. How does it work? Tell me a little bit about the game. There are seven rules that you follow that help you bring that gameful mindset into everyday life. Really simple things like collecting and activating power-ups. So you know in a video game, you play Pac-Man, you eat the power pellet, yeah. and it makes you invincible for a short period of time. Right. So what are the things in real life that can give you that boost of energy or that extra focus or willpower? Um, we teach you to battle bad guys. Uh, when we play video games, we're willing to approach bad guys with different strategies. But in real life, we tend to have one way of doing things and we stick to it. We have our habits and they're set. So we help you figure out what are ways to develop more flexible strategies. So by, by doing this, you're forcing the brain to think and altering different pathways of of neurobiology is that how well there it? there is a neurological component to this you know when you have a gameful mindset you actually have more dopamine flowing in the reward pathways of your brain which is associated with the ability to learn faster and better mm -hmm. and to have more willpower and be more focused on your goals now this game is you 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 get it online is that how it works you can play it on your phone there is a web so you version can, you too you can download it you can. You can just follow the rules in the book. Um, it, because it's a gameful way of thinking, right. you can bring it to your life in lots of different ways. Now, th there are other games that you uh, sort of have, you know, you mentioned a few at the beginning, which is to deal with certain specific issues. Uh, PTSD in particular is one of them. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the game that you would use to help people with PTSD? Sure. Several studies from Oxford University have shown that playing Tetris for 10 minutes within 24 hours of experiencing or witnessing a traumatic event can reduce the number and severity and, of flashbacks. And, what, and what's Tetris? I don't play a single game, so. Yeah. Well, you, I'm sure you've seen Tetris. More than a billion people have played it. It's like one of the most famous uh, games uh, of uh, all time. Uh, it's that, no, it's that no, game no idea. where little puzzle pieces fall down and you try to line them up. Okay. into neat rows. And um, it, it's the kind of game that when you stop playing, you'll close your eyes and you'll still see flashbacks of the puzzle pieces falling. And that's exactly why it is able to stop the brain from fixating on and replaying the trauma. Okay. You're actually getting flashbacks of the game instead of the trauma. And flashbacks are one of the hardest to treat symptoms of PTSD. So this is actually a really powerful way wow. to prevent that. Uh, you also uh, mentioned uh, games to help with cravings like food or alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of game that I need. <laughs> Which one should I be using? 
It's the same principle. So any game that has a really strong visual component, Candy Crush Saga is another example, where you're swapping the candy colored pieces and you close your eyes and you keep seeing them in your mind. Uh, cravings, it turns out, that they're really intensified by imagining what you crave. So when your mind's eye is fixated on it, that makes the craving stronger. If you can preoccupy the mind's eye right. with these visuals, studies have shown that it reduces cravings by between 25 to 50 percent. You only have to play the game for a few minutes to get that effect. So when I'm hungry, play the game and then I'll... You'll stop. still be hungry, but you won't eat necessarily that or cheeseburger or cheesecake that, that you were craving. craving for. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, talk about anxiety, uh, games to help with anxiety, which is a big national problem. There are lots of games that have been tested to be effective for anxiety. I mean, Super Mario, uh, games like Bejeweled. And it turns out that when you play a game that is challenging for you, you go into a certain mind state called flow. Flow is where you feel so fully engaged that you have your complete attention and focus on trying to solve the problem or achieve the goal. Um, that is the same mindset, by the way, associated with meditation. So a lot of the same benefits that you would get from meditation, you would get from being engaged fully with a difficult video game. And the last one, I guess, depression falls into that same category of those games. Yes, absolutely. Could you fall into a trap and become addicted to that feeling? Yes. In, in other words, you know, you have a problem, whether it's anxiety, depression, excessive cravings, or things like that. You start replacing that with video games, which make you feel better, but then you become an addict of the video games. Yes, of course. And that's why I developed the Super Better Method, because the way that you prevent the addiction or that escapist mindset right. is by knowing how to bring those strengths back to everyday life. You need to know, how long do I play this game to get the benefits? How do I create these same feelings without the video game? And that's yeah. what the Super Better Method teaches you. All right. Well, the book, Super Better, you got to get it because it does have a lot of good answers in this modern age where, you know, technology and gaming is such a, you know, part of our you know, the new generation, not mine. I don't play video games, but thank you so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to play Tetris. <laughs> Where can people get more information? Uh, superbetter.com. Superbetter.com. Okay, thank you so much. My pleasure. For coming here. And if you have any questions, send them here at Fox at drmanny at foxnews.com. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.